Hello guys, and welcome to a brand new FPS tutorial series. Um, now, I know I have made an FPS tutorial series in the past, um, but I have since deleted, or not deleted, made those videos private, um, because obviously the video, I, the series only went up to three videos, and, you know, I wanted to create a complete um, series that you guys can follow up on. Um, and you know, be able to use to make, create your own FPS instead of having to drop out of it three episodes in. Um, now, unfortunately, I can't co co um, complete that tutorial series because of the fact that I can no longer edit those um, files that I had because I accidentally deleted them during um, a few, like I think a year ago. So yeah, um, here we are at the start of a fresh FPS tutorial series. And what we're gonna do today is we're going to be basically just setting up um, very much like the RPG series. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our package manager and we're going to be searching for a couple of things. First, we need the gun models that we're gonna be using. Um, and whoops, so we have to go to my assets um, and first, actually, let's let's get our um, player in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna import the standard assets, um, and basically what this will do is it'll give us a really great um, player controller that we'll be using for this project. Um, so yeah, you can see here it's loaded up, and let's just press import and wait for it to load. Okay, so now after the asset has loaded. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to be importing the guns asset that we're going to be using um, in our project um, in this tutorial series. So I believe it is called, um, it should be called low poly gun kit. Um, search up low poly. Of course, both of these assets, both the stand standard asset and the low poly guns will be in the descriptions below for you to, for you to use. Um, now I believe it is called Now the next asset that you guys will be needing to use is this low poly weapons pack um, that I will also put a link down in with the descriptions below for you guys to use um, as well as the standard assets. So that took really <laughs> that was really quick. Um, and yeah, so now we have both our player and our guns ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create um, a plane. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make this like big. <laughs> we're going to make it 10 by 10. Or not on the Y, the Y can just be 1. So we got 10 by 10 over here. And we got an error. Um, oh yeah, I forgot about this. So when you import the standard assets, you want to make sure that you enter the script, double click on the error in the console. And which will lead you to right here um, where you will get an error. Um, now it says G, um, GUI text is obsolete. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be doing unity engine.gui.txt. And that will do the trick and fix your error. And now we can just clear this um, error from our console and get on to game developing, hopefully. <laughs> It, once it compiles. So the next thing that we're going to do once we clear that error is we're just going to go into our standard assets and into our characters folder where we'll click on first person um, and we're going to import our rigid body controller into our scene. And then we can unpack the prefab and we can rename this to be the player. So we can call this, whoops. So we can right click, press rename and call it player. And now when we press play, we should be able to walk around and in our, inside of our, on, on the top of our plane. And what we're gonna do is we're also gonna delete the main camera. We're just gonna make the directional light a bit brighter. So one by one. Let's make this instead of one and make it 1.1. 1 
And yeah, so the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to make a very simple, simple gun. And we're going to put it under a player. Um, and we're just going to give it the ability to shoot with it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to grab a couple of prefabs. And what we're going to start with is just a very simple M1911. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to drag out the game tab so we can see what our player sees when they spawn in. And we're just going to move this M1 under a player or under our camera, our main camera. And we're going to center it by pressing 0, 0, 0 on all of our position slots. And we can just drag it, I believe it's this way, in front. And now you can see we have a gun. So now we can just drag it to the right and position it however we want. I'm just going to drag it right there. I think that looks good enough. I'm also just going to make the gun slightly bigger. And another thing we're going to want to do is you're just going to want to go to our camera. I'm going to turn clipping panes as low as possible. So let's just make this zero and it automatically go to the lowest possible value, which is 0 0.0.1. So basically what this does is that it makes it so that you know, our gun won't clip when it comes close to our face. And I'm just going to move it down a bit like so. And yeah, so now when I press play, you can see that I will have a gun in my scene that will follow my cursor, um, much like a standard FPS. Um, now, I'm actually just going to make this drag out slightly. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be, again, if you haven't read the title of the video, we're going to be making a survival FPS shooter. So. Um, obviously there's going to be hordes of enemies um, that will be coming and basically your job, the job of the player is to survive. Um, and I have decided to go for sort of like a cartoonish um, or like low poly um, um, aesthetic to our FPS. Um, so um, this time, um, instead of creating hands, uh, what we can do is we can create little spheres that will act as hands um, to go along with the low poly aesthetic, um, which is why also we're using you know, the low poly weapons pack. Um, so you can see here that um, we can right click under M1 and we can create two 3D objects that we can call hands, um, right here. call them hands, and we'll drag them under the M1. And each gun will have their own you know, type of hands. And this is also way too big, so we're just going to make the 0 0.1 by 0 0.1 by 0 0.1. And we're just going to drag it like how you would normally hold a gun. And we're just also going to make this a bit smaller. So 0 0.08 by 0 0.08 by 0 0.08. And we're just going to put them kind of like so, um, and make it so that, you know, it seems like you're holding a gun. Um, and I'm also going to put this hand at the trigger. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So now when we press play, um, you can see that we have some very cartoonish looking hands um, in our, on, our, on top of our gun. Now we can also give them a little, a little bit of a texture. Um, so we can create a new folder and we can call it materials. And what we're going to be doing is we're just going to giving, be giving some of our items textures. Um, so we're going to right click in, inside of our folder and create a new material and we're going to call this ground. And the ground can be whatever color you like, but I'm just going to make the ground for my scene kind of like a grass green. Um, and the hands will be, um, I think, a nice red will do because it'll contrast contra contrast very nicely to most of the gun colors. Um, very, it'll be very distinguishable and easy to see, you know, your hands. Um, and I'm just gonna drag them, drag the material onto both of the hands that we got. Yeah, so yeah, that should be pretty much it. So now you can see we have our gun and we have our um, ground and her hand, and they're all textured. So yeah, that's pretty good. Um, and before I end up this video, the final thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be basically making um, our gun shoot something. Um, though we're not going to be you know, making anything else. We're just going to make, be making it shoot like a very simple bullet. Um, and 
yeah so what we're gonna be doing is we're just gonna go into our script we're gonna go into our assets folder and we're gonna right click and we're gonna create our another folder and we're gonna call it scripts um, after the creation of this folder we're just gonna right click and create our first C sharp script and we're gonna call this done and basically this will be the general script for every single one of our guns um, no matter um, which one it is and the re how we're going to do that is we're just going to make it very customizable so once you're in your script after you double click on it is you're going to delete these two functions and for now we're not going to make it customizable because we only have one gun so we're just going to add a couple of variables so the first variable we're going to have is public floats um, got bullet speed and we're going to add another float and we're going to call this bullet prefab and we're going to add, or not a float, sorry my bad, uh, we're going to add another game object bullet prefab and then we're just going to um, that's actually that's pretty much it I think so what we can do is we're going to do public void so we're creating a function here and we're going to say public void um, shoot and what we're going to do is on void update so every so what void update does is that it checks every frame of our game and we're going to say if input dot get key down key code dot right mouse button or mouse button zero sorry mouse zero um then what we're going to do is we're going to play the shoot function uh or run the shoot function and basically what we're going to do is oh i remember we need another variable and we're just going to say public transform bullet exit position and how this is going to work is we're just going to instantiate our bullet prefab um and we're going to instantiate it at the position of bullet exit position dot pos trans dot position sorry and bullet exit position dot rotation and yeah so that's pretty much all we need to instantiate the bullets the bullets won't move for now because we didn't apply any force to them what we're going to do for now is we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it prefabs so this is going to be our prefabs folder we're going to right click and create a sphere that's just going to be about the size of our hand we're not going to create a bullet prefab yet um and that's because um you know we don't really have a bullet prefab um and we're just going to make a sphere for now um also you know if we do it right it might go along with the aesthetic of our low poly world um so yeah so instead of 0 0.5 let's actually make this 0 0.1 0 0.1 by 0 0.1. I think that's still a bit too big, so let's make it 0 0.05. I think that looks acceptable enough, so we can drag this into our prefabs, and we can delete this. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're just going to go into our player. Also, actually, let's make this sphere black, so we can go into our materials um, and create a new material called bulletproof. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make this like a slight, like almost dark black but not quite black hue um and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our player and we're gonna go into our m1911 and we're just gonna drag in our gun script so we can go into our scripts and drag in gun and what we're gonna do is the bullet prefab is obviously going to be our bullet and we can just drag this in um to our variable slot and the exit position is we're gonna create an empty and this empty will be where our bullet's exiting. So you just want to position it right at the top tip of our gun. And we're going to rename this to be bullet exit position. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to go to our M1911 and drag in our bullet exit position as a transform. Now, if you don't know what the transform is, it's basically just a relative position of your a certain object. So now you can see when I click, I'm spawning in objects that are not moving, but I'm spawning them in um, and I can interact with them, but they're not moving uh, because we didn't add any force to them yet, uh, which we will do right now. So I'm also going to exit the bullet ex or edit the bullet exit position because I think it's a bit off center. 
it's hard to tell with this angle. So we just drag it to the left a bit. There we go. Um, I think that should be good. And now we're just going to start applying force to the bullet. Um, and another thing we're going to want to do is we're going to go into the prefab and we're going to um, give it a rigid body. So we're just going to go into the prefab, click on the bullet and press add component and we're going to add a rigid body. Basically a rigid body allows us to apply force to the object in question. And in this case, it's a bullet. Uh, we're just going to press disable use gravity so that the bullet doesn't drop. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a force to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say bar bullet is equal to instantiate uh, the newly instantiated object. I want to destroy the bullet after three seconds. And once you have added destroy bullet after three seconds, what we're going to do is we're going to say bullet uh, get component rigid body. So we're referencing the rigid body component of the bullet. And we're going to say dot um, bullet dot get component rigid body dot um, add force. Sorry. And so we're just referencing the part of the uh, bullet that's going to be able to apply force to our object. And we're going to add a force of transform dot forward times our bullet speed that we will set in our inspector. So yeah, that's literally it. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our M1911 and we're going to turn the bullet speed up to like 123. I, I don't know. I just typed that in random. Um, so now when we press it's going to, okay, so it's going backwards now. Um, that's not good um, because obviously um, we don't want it to go backwards, but the reason it's going backwards is because we're setting the bullet rotation to be relative, to be the exact same as our um, bullet exit position, um, which in our case is not exactly centered. So. Um, the reason that we're going to be having this go backwards is because, um, you know, when you rotate your player, um, the bullet will still be going a specific speed, um, so or a specific direction. So we might actually have to turn this into a negative. Um, and then um, what we're going to do is we're just going to press play and test it out. And now you can see that work. Um, and I still think it's a bit slow. So I'm just going to make the bullet speed like a thousand. Um, and yeah, it should work now. So you can see if I hit it, if I hit it into the ground, it'll bounce, it might bounce back up. Yeah, so sometimes it bounces back up, which is pretty cool, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, we basically have our gun working now. Um, and you can see that in the inspector, they are deleting themselves after three seconds. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the th first video. In the second video, we're going to make animations um, for our gun. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.